First, let's complete lecture one, the last unit, 1.5. Solutions based on views. Okay. The title, yeah. The problem number four, sort and array. So our first sorting problem, sort and array. So let's look at the problem given an array. Okay. How to sort it? In ascending order. Yeah. So that's a you know simple question. Yeah. So here for this class we will learn the sorting algorithms many many times. Yeah. So at least the four or five times. So this is the first sorting algorithm. Okay. Here I'll give you the reference uh, in the textbook. Okay. First, the problem type, sorting. Yeah. So we know. Uh, here, let's have a short discussion uh, to find a solution. You need to understand the problem. Okay. So we will spend a lot of time trying to understand the problem. Okay. There are different views. Yeah, because when you try to understand the problem. Usually, different people may have different views for the same problem. Even for the same person, we can take different views, right? Sometimes we can change views. Okay, yeah. And the different views usually correspond to different solutions. When you change a view, you may get a different solution. So that's what I want to, uh, you know, emphasize in this unit. Your solution is usually based on your experience. Yeah. So that's why the experience is very important. Yeah. And for this problem, we will base on our experience. So we have learned unit one through four, one, two, three, four. That's our experience. Now our unit five, can we use you know some our previous the, the knowledge we learned? Before, in the last uh, two lectures, we use that to solve this problem. So based on our experience, yeah. so let's see how to do it. Okay. All right, choose an algorithm. You may have many choices. Yeah. At the beginning, we do not have much experience. Yeah. So we just try to find the simplest way to solve the problem. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. All right, so how do we base on our experience? Let's explore the properties of this problem. Okay. Let's think in this way. If the array is sorted, what property can we get? So we try to explore. We assume the array is already sorted. We try to look at its property. So that's one way to look at the problem, right? Yeah. Here, so let me you know, draw a diagram to explain that. Here, let's assume this array is sorted. Yeah. But you, here you see I didn't consider any equal case. Two elements are the same, but in the real world problem, we may have the situation two elements could have the same value, right? But here I want to say, we assume distinct elements for convenience, okay? Yeah. For you know discussion, uh, easier discussion. Yeah. But if we can do, if we can solve the problem with distinct elements, we can easily solve with you know duplicate elements, right? Yeah, easily solved with duplicate elements. Yeah. So, so that's why uh, most of the time we make this assumption. Okay? Yeah. Let's take a look. Now we can see when it is sorted, we know A0 is the minimum. Minimum? Yeah. Think about we just solved problem finding the minimum, right? That's our old experience. 
So here we connect to our old experience. Minimum. Okay. After that, yeah, because this is already the minimum. Okay? So let's cover this. The remaining, oops, sorry, the remaining elements. You can see A1 is the minimum of the remaining part of the array. See? Yeah. So this minimum view, yeah, this is the view. This is our view. Okay? We take this minimum view at this problem. Minimum view. Yeah. And we know how to find a minimum, right? Yeah. That's already, you know, we discussed optimal solution. Right? Last time, we have an optimal algorithm to find a minimum. Here, we use that. Okay. So we do not start from scratch. So now, closely related to the minimum problem. Okay. So we build our current algorithm on top of that minimum algorithm. Yeah. So that's our first solution. Okay. Yeah. How to design an algorithm based on the minimum problem? So we assume we have the solution of that minimum problem. You can use that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So in your new algorithm, you can write a function that returns the minimum of the given array. Yeah. So you have that function. So you can call that function to return you the current minimum. Okay. Yeah. Now we're ready to describe our sorting algorithm, selection sort. This is called a selection sort. Why selection? So you will see it, it is related to the selection problem, right? Minimum is a special selection problem, right? So that's why we call it a selection sort. Okay. All right, so description is very straightforward. The data, yeah, so here we just you know, use another way to represent the data. All right. At the beginning, we can find its minimum. The first minimum, we, we can find the whole minimum of the whole array, right? So let's assume we define a function called main underscore prob underscore solver. Yeah? We want to want this function return the minimum of the array that is passed to this function. Okay? Yeah. We just call it. <laughs> Give us the minimum. Okay? Yeah. So let me draw the diagram. After we find that minimum, we put it at the first location in the sorted array. Yeah, we know it should be the first one in a sorted array. Okay? So let's place it. Okay? Here we cut this element, we put it here, we call it in place. This element is in place. Yeah. yeah. We use this terminology in place. That means it is in its right place after the array is sorted. Okay. After the array is sorted, this is the right place. So in place. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that's, you know. Uh, we will use this uh, again and again. So many times we will talk about. All right. All right. The first element is in place. Now, we want to look at the second element in place. Okay. All right. Let's consider the remaining elements. Okay. Let's use a notation, this array, because we chop. The first element, the remaining element. Yeah, actually, we, yeah, not necessarily that a zero, right? Not necessarily a zero. We, we take, we exclude minimum, then the remaining elements. We put in a, you know, smaller subarray, uh, a uh, sub one. Okay. Yeah. Then we can call our minimum function, minimum problem solver function return the current minimum, that's min 1, and 
remaining element a sub 2. Okay? So then the second element is in place, and so on. So after that, I think I do not need to repeat. <laughs> so you know how to do it. Yeah. So every time we put a one element in place, okay? Yeah. All right. So finally, we can put all the elements in place. See? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So things like this. Okay. All the elements in place. So the result, if all the elements are in place, then the whole array is sorted. All the elements are in place. Then the whole array is sorted. Okay. Now let me ask you. If we know there are n minus 1 elements in place, can we say the array is sorted or not? We know n minus 1 elements are in place. Yeah. Yes. Because the last one, you have no choice, right? Because only one position left. That must be the location of the last element. Yeah. So even we know there are n minus 1 elements in place. Already sorted. Yeah. OK? Yeah. So we have this property. When all the elements are in place, the array is sorted. OK? Yeah. So the problem is solved. So next, we need to do some analysis. Okay. Uh, here you can see that in this algorithm, we already use the recursion approach, right? Recursion. Here, yeah. this is a recursion. Okay. Recursively. Yeah. Recursion. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But this recursion topic is very big, important topic. So we will leave. So we will. Actually, we will have two lectures talking about recursion. Two lectures. Yeah. Next two. Lecture three and lecture four. These, those two we'll talk. So that's why it's a big topic. Yeah. So we'll leave more discussion yeah. after this lecture. Yeah. Efficiency analysis. Fundamentals. So for this lecture, oh, still not that. This is uh, still lecture one. In the next lecture, we will learn fundamentals of analysis. Still, we count the number of comparisons. So when we do that, count. let's count number of comparisons. It's not very hard. Yeah. So let's do it step by step. Yeah. Every time when we get a minimum, how many comparisons do we need? Yes. The size of the array minus 1. Current size. So it depends on the size of your data. Okay? At the beginning, the size is n, so you have n minus 1. The second time, your size becomes n minus 1, so it is n minus 2, and so on. Right? Yeah. So the 1, but the last one, 0. Last one, you do not need to do any comparison. Only one element left. You just put it in place. Okay. Yeah. Now, let's add these numbers together, and we get an answer. This is the, you know, this number gives us the efficiency of the problem. Efficiency. Yeah. So why this number gives us efficiency? Yeah. Next lecture, we discuss it. That. Yeah. But here we know it's closely related to the efficiency, but it's a very good number to describe efficiency. Yeah. So, like last time you talked about heat like dominant coefficients, do we, like in this case, on a test, would you want us to keep the minus one or would you just want us one half n squared? Yeah. Usually, uh, read the question carefully. Okay. From the question, uh, yeah. From the question, yeah. Based on the question, we can see what time we need to give exact answer. What time we need to give this approximate answer? Yeah. yeah. 
let's have more discussion. Then we will answer that question. Yeah. So we, we need to see a lot of examples. Then uh, at some time, I will let you know. So what is the guideline uh, for this question? Yeah. All right. Best case, worst case, average case. Can you see that? What is the best case, worst case, average case? Yeah. In our minimum problem, we already. Right, we saw that. Yeah, the same, right? Yeah. Here, because we basically we use the minimum problem, so we should have the same thing. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, that is the lecture of, you know, our first lecture. Yeah. We completed five units. Right. All right. So now let me jump to go to. Lecture two.